Welcome back everyone to JSA TV, where we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders across the digital infrastructure industry. Joining us now live from the show floor of Yada 2024, we've got Jeff Barber with Bloom Energy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Like I said, this is always the best part of any show. I look forward to the JSA interviews, insightful questions. We look so forward good. to having you every time as well. <laughs> Before you. we dive into it, you do you have had a lot going on, but I want to first just uh, for those who might not be familiar with Bloom and what you do, sure. can you just give us a quick background on how you help your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So Bloom at its core is on-site microgrid power. So electrons for the data center or other, any other sort of facility. We are at our core a hydrogen fuel cell. We extract that hydrogen from natural gas. Or if you have what I call the unicorn flying over the rainbow, which is quantities of green hydrogen at your site, you, you can feed us that and we'll give you electrons. So. Bloom steps in when you need to supplement or completely replace the utility. And right now we have just a couple of power issues in our industry. I don't know if anybody's heard. Um, power is kind of tough to get. And if you can get it, it's sometimes a decade out. So that yeah. doesn't work for data center. We need to have an on-site solution. And that's what Bloom does for many, many years now. We're well over a decade old. One of the biggest challenges within the industry right absolutely. now. That's absolutely right. So. Speaking of, you've set us up very nicely for the first question that I've got for you. We've mm -hmm. recently seen announcements from Bloom related to companies like Intel, CoreWeave, Quanta, and these new products seem to be focused on GPU type workloads. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, we've heard that that doesn't work necessarily yeah. within those types of companies, but that's not quite the case. No, absolutely not the case. No, this is that's a great question. Thank you. Um, Bloom is absolutely perfect for what we call oscillating workloads, which tend to be machine learning AI focused workloads. GPUs go up and down many times, 50 times in just a several seconds. But Bloom has deployed for any microgrid, and we have a thousand systems out there, plus we deploy ultra capacitors and super capacitors. So no, we absolutely can respond instantaneously to workload shifts and it gives the fuel cell time to adjust itself. So we're the perfect fit for these types of workloads as the market is, is proving. Um, it's just taken a little bit of marketing and a little bit of conversations like this to get the word out that we deploy storage devices like ultra capacitors and super capacitors. So very fast discharge. We've done that for many years. So this is not new to Bloom. So yeah. more, there's much more to come on this front as well, which is great. So why now? Why do you think you're seeing the level of success that you're seeing now? Uh, it's a it's a confluence of, of multiple factors, right? Utility is not there. Primarily transmission is not there. You have um, an exponential spike in digital infrastructure build outs in, in this wave of machine learning, AI, GPU workloads, but also just still the wave of digitization. Still, I mean, the cloud is still very much growing. Yeah. We're still digitizing. We're still creating, you know, terabytes per day per person on our phones with videos and pictures and all of that. So everything's coming together right now and utility's not there necessarily, not in, in, in many cases anyway. So yeah, the market has to look to on-site power generation solutions. Well, and we, yeah, we absolutely need the power. So we definitely need companies like yours bringing these solutions to the table. It's an important part of the process. Yeah, it's not gonna happen without <laughs> it. So another common misconception about on-site generation is the physical space that it consumes. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I joined Bloom almost two years ago now, which is crazy. Um, I would say the number one objection was not pricing, was not performance, certainly not reliability. Number one objection was the amount of space that it took. And there was some legitimacy to that. We were we were quoting um, footprints such as, you know, 2,000 square feet per megawatt. Wow. So we've been working on that for the past couple of years and have solved that. So we've centralized common processes like fuel filters and inverters which gives us more power per skid, and now we're stacking them from the factory. So with a simple equipment platform, you can go four units high, and that's approximately 25 megawatts and 8,000 square feet. Now that's more than competitive with combustion devices like aeroderivatives. That's an incredible advancement in our footprint. So that's a that's a very big fix for the company. It's, it's a great thing. Yeah, well, congratulations on the Thank great you. work you're doing. Thank you. Keep it up, we're definitely looking forward to hearing more. We're getting there. But we are. Let's talk for another moment about sustainability. Uh, of course, it's at the core of what you do and what yeah. you guys bring to the table for your customers. So you're also a greener data author. I am. But you are also- uh, we'll have a book signing later. I'm happy <laughs> to get you a copy. That's right, yes. we'll do it. Um, but you are also a recent speaker at the New York City Climate Week. Yes. Um, so can you just talk to us generally about your dedication for sustainability mm -hmm. and just 
what it means to you and to our industry. Absolutely. First of all, that was an incredible experience. The the um, the format of the show and the questions that were asked were very hard hitting. Like, you know, no no fluffy questions, uh, which was good. A lot of a lot of developers there. Uh, a lot of folks like Bloom there. As you said, it, it sustainability is at the core of Bloom, yeah. right? So we uh, again. Uh, our basis is we are a hydrogen fuel cell. Hydrogen is just difficult to distribute and manufacture at this point. So we derive that from natural gas, but we have zero combustion, right? So there's no particulates, no NOx or SOx. Um, we are able to use that natural gas at about a 60% efficiency rate. So that means 60% of those molecules are converting to electrons. That all equates to a much, much greener story than uh, certainly than combustion. And most utilities, at least in the U.S., are still burning. Uh, so yeah, zero combustion with plumbing. Yeah. So it's a very good story. Yeah. It's going to take these new solutions and new ideas to get us where we need to be. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you're excited about here at the show or, or just in general? Incredible show. Congratulations, Yada. This is the inaugural show, I believe, yeah. right? But yeah. the the level of attendee and the level of meetings that we're having are, is absolutely fantastic. The, the, the venue's a little large. It's about two mile, <laughs> a two mile walk from my room, we'll but that's all right. We've we'll all clocked there. 10 miles for the day we'll, already. We'll get yeah. there. Good we'll deal. There. Well, thank you, Jeff, so much for stopping by. We look forward to having you back on JSA TV again very, very soon. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. And thank to you. our viewers, thank you again for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to come here from day one of Yada 2024. In the meantime, stay curious and stay connected, everyone.